The canoe is going to go all into the water. All the materials for Congress here and Watsonagate around that area. So it was only right to have this canoe sit in our waters one time before it goes back to Madison. Everywhere the Anishinaabe went in this area, they went by Wasajiman. It was our main way of travel. Everywhere we went, it was by canoe. And at one time, everybody in our community knew how to build these first rock canoes. So it's my dream that we carry that forward into the next generations and keep this craft and part of our identity alive for future generations to come. Because that's who we are. We're Anishinaabe people. In 2013, Anishinaabe artist and educator Wayne Vallier Minogijik built a birch bark canoe, one of many he's made in his career. That project, Wigwasijiman, These Canoes Carry Culture, partnered Wayne, the Envision Program of Lac de Flambeau Elementary School, and the University of Wisconsin Madison. My name is Wayne Vallier. I work for um, Lacta Flambeau tribe of Lake Superior Chippewa Indians. I'm a Ojibwe language instructor, culture teacher for the Lacta Flambeau tribe. The seed I've been working on for 25 years in my community and I'm starting finally seeing like the fruits of it. In our classroom, Mr. Vallier's classroom, we, our students sit in, a, in the sacred circle. We sit in a circle and teach. We're not like the European church pews, we don't sit in a line. We sit in a circle, and that's how knowledge flows, is in a circle. That's how creation flows. What we're doing is we're planting a positive seed of identity in our young people. A long time ago, the Anishinaabe had a great respect for wigwams. They used it for everything. They used it the proper way. They used it for their ceremonies. They used it for their foods. They used it for their canoes, for their dwellings that they lived in in the cold winter months. One of my elders sat me down and he said, you know, you know, um, the birch tree, we're not losing the birch trees, he said, the birch trees are losing us. So the birch tree is a spirit, he said, a living spirit, just like you and I. And he said that uh, that tree is standing there and looking at the native people saying, okay, well, you don't want to use me anymore, use me in the proper way then, I'll just leave. We look at that tree as a living being and we make that tree in thousand parts before we harvest it. And we promise that tree that we'll do the very best we can and in the proper way to use it. So it's giving its life for our lives to make us strong, give us health and strength. <laughs> wow. There was a great awareness this project, these students carry culture, you know, we're involving young people and exposing them to Wigwas and showing them how the connection between the earth and, and our people and our history and our identity. You can tell the quality of this piece because it's still so it's, viable. You know? Part of what we wanted to do as the university partners in the project was to document the entire process of the canoe building, from the harvest of the materials to the actual building of the canoe to the launch and beyond. The canoe was not a historical reenactment, something meant to show people how things were done in the old days. What we wanted to document was the very effective and innovative ways in which Wayne adapts his traditions in the here and now. People start thinking of better ways of doing it, just like my elder that told me, you know, our ancestors used stone tools a long time ago. If you, Minogiji, can think of a better way of doing this, you do it. My brother is also one of my teachers. My brother's built more canoes than I have. So we've got to work together on it. We discuss a lot of these things and we bounce a lot of things off. So we came up with different methods of doing things that, that uh, make a stronger canoe. And um, as far as modern tools, you know, he said, 
And if your ancestors had a chainsaw to cut a tree down, they would use them. At the end of the day, you still have an Anishinaabe canoe because these are Anishinaabe hands, okay? Ninjin hands. The Ojitun, Wigwasajumanakewin. These are still the hands of a native that built that canoe. I'm an outreach specialist with the UW Collaborative Center for Health Equity. With a project like this, you know, you've got kids who are working um, a lot outdoors, um, which is good for them physically. It's hard labor, lots of walking, lots of uh, carrying heavy cedar logs as you're uh, walking out of the woods. Okay, now see that? It's the same grain, guys. It's really important that we understand that health is also is a cultural construction and a cultural process, the idea of healing and getting well. It's a project that's um, uh, very symbolically important because it's a symbol of, you know, uh, people going out in the woods and working with their hands and, cre and uh, creating, uh, through the means of self-reliance, uh, their own sort of informal economy and a good life for themselves. As a folklorist, I was involved in documenting the entire artistic process. So we worked directly with Wayne, the Envision students, and the canoe. I had the chance to experience firsthand then the benefits of public humanities projects that involve and engage so many different communities. We created a blog, social media pages, even a permanent website so that we could make sure to connect the work on campus with community members in Lac de Flambeau, Madison, and then folks all over the world. My job on campus is I'm a professor in the art department. I run the woodworking and furniture making program. And perhaps most relevant to this project is I oversee a series of semester-long residencies in the woodshop um, where we have different people come in for one semester and do some, uh, I basically do their work in the woodshop as a sort of a curriculum enhancement and as a role model for the students. The materials are just so different, it's a whole set of of inherited knowledge that one has to have to understand the birch bark, the spruce root, and the, the pine pitch, and the cedar. It's just a, it's such a specialized skill set. I wanted people to get a sense that there was that other tradition, that, that they need to think about that, be aware of it, uh, try to understand it. I'm not sure we can understand it from outside, but to understand that there is a different tradition and there's a different relationship to materials and there's a different sort of spiritual connection to the objects. My name is Dallas Hart. I'm 14 and I live in Wisconsin. And what we did was we sewed up some of the ribs and we worked on the ends of the canoe, making the designs, cutting them, sewing them. Being down in Madison, just a couple couple of your friends and a good teacher, it, it's a fun time. By them having identity and knowing who they are, there's an old, old motif for their people. It's like this. By knowing where you've been, you'll have a greater understanding on where you're going. So it's going to add strength. Their solid foundation of their identity is going to, yes, I can go to college. I can obtain that education, but I don't have to lose my native value to understand Western society and be part of it. I can be the best of both worlds. Remember it, because sometimes you guys the old ladies say, oh, I remember that old man, Middle Asia, he told me a story about that. I know all that goes, here's all it goes. As the boat took more and more shape, it just was such a powerful object and people coming in to see it was like, holy moly. And there's just, you know, certain stages of it that were just so great to watch, you know, whether it was the bending of the ribs and standing inside the canoe and sort of pushing them out with your feet. Wayne is a natural when it comes to teaching. Every day Wayne graciously welcomed anyone who wanted to learn to join in and lend a hand. The woodshop became this rich, dynamic space for sharing knowledge and language and culture. We had youth from the Goodman Community Center here in Madison working alongside kids from Lac de Flambeau. We had university students studying folklore and art. And everyone who came to this project had something to share with it. We talk a lot about um, collaboration and um, working in teams, and I've always been a huge advocate of collaborative art, and I think this was a great demonstration of that, of bringing people in, I mean, who maybe didn't know that much. Like, I didn't know how to build a canoe at all, but, I mean, he was, Wayne was really great at 
you know, teaching newcomers. Both communities, UW and Lac de Flambeau, learned from each other by being able to have a, a very long discussion. It gave, gave the university and folks an opportunity to really connect with people from the Lac de Flambeau community. And I think the relationships are um, real and authentic and they're, they're lasting. We're all looking forward to our futures at UW Madison. Uh, they're warming it up. Nobody eat already? Guys eat? No. Anything don't fall for my shoe? I've kind of dedicated my life to try to save our culture and make sure that it stays alive for the ones that come after me. The, uh, the gay Danish Nabe, the old people that, that left it for us and uh, to carry forward. We were lucky enough to save some of that when I was a young person. My older brother and I, we saved uh, a lot of our language, our Nwewind, our sound. We also saved a lot of our, uh, our teachings and our old, our old uh, ceremonies in our community. <coughs> and uh, we uh, preserved them in a lot of different ways. But best of all, they are preserved in our young people. They are they are knowing these things, and they're they're the ones that are going to carry them further, so that so that uh, not only the Glossajimani Kewin Birch Park Canoe culture lives, but our culture in general stays alive for many generations to come, and to let the world know that the Anishinaabe are still here, and we're still alive, and we're still following our values. Miigwech. <laughs> Wasajiman ain't dad. A canoe comes home. Waswagening. We don't have to lose our identity to become educated in a Western world. We can match both of them and live strong for future generations and leave a good footprint for our grandchildren. When we all work together, we can make so much more happen than when we work alone. And students, as you walk out to find your place in this walk, be sure you take a good look at that beautiful, beautiful Juman, that Uglossi Juman that you see in front of you. Um, and think about how it's going to be to have that out on, on the lakes here in Roswell. This canoe represents, represents approximately 50 months of hard work from students and different people all over the place. Over a thousand hands and good energy have touched this canoe in the past year. There's been friendships made. Every time when I try to take a turn in my road to go after something else, it always led me back to this road where I'm supposed to be. This is where I'm supposed to be.